This past week, the New York Times published a review slash study on the season eight biggest loser contestants. The results seem to be rather surprising to many. Of the 14 contestants followed, 13 of them put the weight back on, four of them put all the weight back on plus some. Somehow, this surprised the researchers who stem from the dieting industry. Two more. The more successful you are at losing weight, the slower your metabolism will be and the more hungry you'll be. A main factor they didn't take into account was the type of training they were actually doing during The Biggest Loser, which was high intensity, randomized exercises put together in a program that lasted often six to nine hours a day. All right, so one more piece that I want you to take a look at is they interviewed one of the trainers from The Biggest Loser, Bob Harper, who actually flat out declined taking any ownership on their behalf. Now, I want you to remember the researchers found two incriminating pieces of hardcore evidence why this is happening to people who yo-yo diet all their lives. And here are the two things they found out. One, they completely shut their metabolisms up, plural, down. And number two, whereas they started the Biggest Loser Challenge with normal levels of leptin, leptin is a hormone uh, which helps regulate whether or not you feel satiated. So when they all started the challenge initially, they had normal levels of leptin only to end the uh, Biggest Loser Challenge with no leptin whatsoever in their bloodstream. Not one of them had leptin. What's the problem? What causes that? Well, two dramatic things. One was the high intensity training with random exercises that produced random results and, of course, the severely caloric reduced diet. But there was this article uh, just out in the New York Times talking yep. about, uh, you've done 17 seasons, but they, were, they did a study on season eight. Season eight. Yes, and they in this, there were 16 contestants, 14 people participated in the study, 13 of those people gained the weight back, and four of those people surpassed their initial weight. Right. But there, there's been criticism of the show in the past saying that these of people course. live in an unrealistic weight loss zone. You know, they're at this, this, this ranch where they're, it's monitored what they eat. They lose it very, very quickly. And perhaps that's why they put it back on. What do you say to that? I mean, we live in a world of reality television, right? And of course, our show is extreme, just like anything else. I mean, we are, um, we are working with people that are morbidly obese. But what we have show, seen from um, all the seasons of being on the show when we get our doctor's report back is that um, their body bodies are healthier. What do you recommend for people who look at who look at those people and relate to the before picture more than the after picture, who have no idea where to go, no idea how to do it, and then hear stories about people who've lost it and put it back on. I mean, it's so discouraging. It is all about what you're doing at the grocery store, restaurants, and in your kitchen. All right, can we cut the bullshit here? I don't think I have to sell anybody really on the notion that the biggest loser, the whole concept of working out somewhere between six and nine hours a day on an extremely caloric reduced diet is a good idea. Do I? All right, so first I'm gonna explain to you how people get themselves into this situation through their history of yo-yo dieting and the cause and effect. Then I'm gonna show you how to ensure you get yourself out of this trap that you're being marketed constantly to follow. Because whether you know this or not, the dieting industry is a $75 billion a year business, and they would love nothing more than for you to never succeed and continue what you're doing, by the way, every time you do fail. And you know what I'm talking about. You blame yourself. You don't blame blame the idiotic calorie reduced diet nope you blame yourself and so whatever self-esteem you do have what do you do 
you knock it down a few notches, I'd like to see that change. So I'm going to give you the do's and don'ts on how to, first of all, get yourself out of that hole. And secondly, perhaps more importantly, to ensure that you never get into that hole. Whatever does Formula One racing have to do with weight loss? Well, let me tell you something. Formula One racing has benefited us, the consumers, a lot in our everyday use of vehicles from tires to suspension to safety to disc brakes. All of this trickles down from the elite in car racing so that we can stand to benefit from it. Bodybuilding is to the fitness industry what Formula One racing is to the automotive industry in that the elites go to extremes in bodybuilding manipulating the body and while I am not a bodybuilder myself and I'm not encouraging you to become one, I'm saying that there's a lot we can learn from bodybuilders in terms of how to increase our muscle metabolism without the use of drugs but with the use of their training protocols. To explain how this happens, let's take a look at Susan. She'll be our role model and will demonstrate exactly what goes on inside the body of people who have a history of yo-yo dieting. So our model starts, she is five foot four inches tall, and when she gets to be 158 pounds, the number might vary, it bothers her so much now that she has decided she will do anything to lose the weight. So of course she goes on one of the more than 10,000 diets currently in the marketplace, uh, according to the FDA. All of these diets have the same structure, but they all have different names. The same structure being uh, an insane caloric reduced diet that is unsustainable. This means there's no way in hell you can possibly stay on this for an indefinite period of time, which means it will have repercussions on your metabolisms and your hormones. So she finally decides she's going to make a go at it and here's what happens. So if we measure more than just scale weight, we can see that our model, Susan, starts at 158 pounds on the scale, but her body composition is made up of 30% body fat and 103 pounds of lean muscle tissue. You must know that muscle is the single most active entity in your body responsible for burning off fat. All right, those are the starting numbers. So our model Susan is so determined that she wants to get down to 120 pounds, which means she needs to lose 38 pounds. So off we go on some crazy ass diet, but it doesn't matter. We are determined to make it happen. So here's what happens. We're going to suggest that our model Susan actually succeeds. Trust me for lack of a better word, because she's not really succeeding. Now let's take a look at the numbers. So we see that she is down to 120 pounds on the scale. However, she's not very happy with how she looks naked, but that's besides the point. She is now down 120 pounds. She feels like she should feel successful, but she doesn't really. And if we look further at the numbers, we can probably see why. So from 30% body fat, she only dropped 6% in body fat and she lost quite a bit of lean muscle tissue so she's now sitting around 85 pounds of lean muscle tissue which means she's lost a lot of her fat burning potential now because this diet is not sustainable we know susan's coming off of this as a matter of fact so does susan but in her mind she's thinking it doesn't matter as long as I can fit in that dress for my event. Not realizing the damage, long-term damage she is doing to both her metabolism and her hormonal system. All right, so what does that mean? Well, let's face it, we all know it means she's going to gain the weight back. But those of you who have been yo-yo dieting know full well, it doesn't mean you're just gonna gain the weight back, it means you're going to gain the weight back 
Carlos Lassa. Now here is the incredible part. Somehow, at some point, Susan will try, try again. She will actually muster up enough courage and enough self-esteem to try, try again. But of course, this time she's no fool. She's not going to go back to that same diet that screwed her over the first time. No siree. She's going to pick the exact same style of a diet with a different name and fool herself into thinking this time it will be different. But alas, it will not. So what happens this time around, no matter how hard Susan tries, she certainly does get her weight down, but she can't get down as much as she did the first time. Why? She's now causing two major catastrophes inside her body. One, we can see by the numbers, her lean muscle mass, her fat burning machine is reduced dramatically. And number two, what we don't see in the numbers is that she is reducing dramatically the levels of leptin in her body. Now, leptin, you should know, is a hormone that helps regulate your hunger. It lets you feel satiated. And if you don't feel satiated, let's face it, you just keep eating. And unfortunately, that brings us here with less lean muscle tissue than ever inside Susan's body and her body hardly producing any leptin at all at this stage. And keep in mind, this is only after two diets. This might happen after two diets, it might happen after three, but it's going to happen. So here's what Susan is now left with. She is now fighting a battle that is near impossible because of the marketing in the marketplace encouraging people who want to lose weight to always go on some ridiculous diet and what is all the rage today with trainers i don't understand it but it's high intensity interval training using light weights and high repetitions and of course cardio 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 if you're not sweating you're not doing the body any good and that my friends is a load of crap period what you need to do and you need to do this just to get your body back you got to start training as I pointed out earlier when we saw Arnold Schwarzenegger bodybuilding now you have to know he took steroids and today in the bodybuilding industry steroids clenbuterol and growth hormones are illegal drugs that are commonly used so when you see images of these people on the front pages of magazines and you're going oh i don't want to bulk up when a client tells me they don't want to bulk up and i'm looking at somebody who's morbidly obese i get saddened at the level of ignorance so i'm trying to help you out here start training like a power lifter or a bodybuilder Obviously, I'm not encouraging drug use. It's not necessary. Start eating real foods and stay away from processed foods. So you've got real foods or food-like products. If it has a food label on it, it's a food-like product. Eat real foods. That is foods that don't have food labels on them. For example, when you walk into the grocery store and you see a banana, you really need a food label on it to tell you it's a banana? You know what's behind that bright yellow packaging? Yeah, a banana. So we know that that's food. So there are a lot of foods in the grocery store, usually around the perimeter of the grocery store, that we know are real foods. Focus on that. Whether it's meats, uh, fish, poultry, eggs, nuts, seeds, vegetables, fruits, these are foods people do not become obese eating. But walk up and down the aisles where all the food-like products are, and I guarantee you that is where you're going to run into trouble. So let's recap. We now know that the participants of The Biggest Loser represent people who have yo-yo dieted 
all their lives. And we now know that it's not just about what they're eating, it's about the internal damage caused as a result of the dramatically reduced caloric diets, not only during the show, but also that they have obviously participated in throughout their lives that have caused hormonal damage as well as shutting down their metabolisms. Now, when they talk about shutting down the metabolisms, they're talking mainly about muscle metabolism. And remember, muscle is the single most active entity in your body responsible for burning off fat. So we really don't want to do that. But if it has been done, we really need to now look at how the exercise programming is being done. Right now, as I mentioned, HIIT, H-I-I-T, is very popular and it's just a bunch of random exercises slapped together, high intensity interval training, which, you know, if you're an athlete or you're already at where you want to be, you, you've reached your goal, be it physically uh, in appearance or physically in performance, you can do any random workout you want and enjoy it. It's a workout. But if your goal is to become a fat burning machine because you're not a fat burning machine, you seriously need to look at working out similar to a power lifter and or a body builder. No drugs, just the protocols. This is what's going to regain your lean muscle tissue and help you become the fat burning machine you're frustrated about not being. And of course, when it comes to foods, as I mentioned, to stick to real foods, you don't have to go with dramatically reduced dieting just yet, unless you've really screwed yourself over and your body doesn't have any leptin. So if you find that eating 800, 900, 1000 calories a day and you're gaining weight, that is a clear indicator that you seriously have to start lifting weights and reestablish um, lean muscle tissue to help accelerate your overall metabolism. All right, so there you have it. I hope you found this extremely helpful. And please share this video because I promise you, we're not talking tens of thousands of people could benefit from watching this. We're talking millions of people need to know this information. No reason to hog it all to yourself. Share away and please live by these guidelines. You will thank your lucky stars or just thank me. Uh, I hope you find this helpful.